My name is Simon Coronel. I'm 30 at the moment, and for a year now I've been a full-time performer slash producer, making impossible things apparently happen. My childhood was interesting. I was, you know, one of those sort of shy, introverted, you know, thoughtful kids who, you know, didn't really fit in, and you know, we know how that goes in primary school. It's never exactly fun. Most people get into magic when they're very young, but I was was always kind of exploring different things. I was fascinated by space and then dinosaurs and then different kinds of science and art. I tried to learn about three different musical instruments, but none of them really stuck until uh, first year university where I sort of discovered this whole magic thing. Magic was never something I considered as a source of income initially. I was working in catering, in hospitality. The first paid gig I ever did was a, ver a very close family friend offered me $50 to perform at her 11-year-old daughter's birthday party. I went, 50 bucks? Heck yes. I tend to avoid children's entertainment nowadays. There's nothing but hecklers. There's a, there's a lot of cliches about the kinds of people that tend to become magicians, with fortunately a lot of great exceptions. It tends to be introverted people, nerdy people, definitely male rather than female. It's so effective a way to socialize. You show someone something, everyone's instantly amazed and adoring and wow, oh my god, you get so much attention that it quickly becomes like a drug. Now, there's a worse guys to be than the magic guy. You know, you could be awkward guy in the corner. That's not a fun guy to be. But I kind of gave myself a rigid rule to not rely on magic as a social crutch. You're always learning something like magic. I mean, I think any art or craft, you're always learning. You never stop. And it's what's interesting about it is the different things you find yourself caring about learning as time goes on. So when you get a beginner, first time someone gets into magic, they just want to know secrets. How's it done? What's the method? And then after a little while, you know, you've gorged yourself on secrets. Then it's about the handling. It's about refining the techniques. You know, switches, fake transfers, palms, steals, flourishes, all different kinds of techniques. You know, to learn one move can take months. So everything you do needs an enormous amount of practice. And it's also about getting the angles exactly right. And that's where the traditional thing of practicing in a mirror comes from. But the other thing, the other problem with mirrors that you often get is this um, mirror gaze, which is this kind of vaguely vacant stare into the distance that you see on performers' faces when they're too used to practicing in a mirror. When I'm performing, it's normally from a fairly narrow selection of tricks. If you focus on a small set of tricks and do them really, really well, it's a thousand times better than having a huge repertoire that's average or mediocre. I'm particularly fascinated at the moment and chasing after tricks that leave you with a permanently altered magical object. The tricks that linger, because most illusions happen in an instant. Something appears, done. Something disappears, done. Something penetrates or levitates. You know, it lasts maybe a few seconds and it's over. Knowing how tricks work does completely spoil it, and that is sad, it's a loss. I mean, I wouldn't change it, it's a fair trade-off, but I, there are so many tricks I see now that I wish just once I could have seen without that knowledge. Houdini, by all accounts, was a massive douchebag. I mean, look, and the guy was a megastar, don't get me wrong, he's, you know, the greatest legendary figure in the whole industry, but that did not mean that he was a very nice person. The thing that I've always found myself working towards, a feeling that a few different live shows I've seen have given me, call it amazement or wonder or astonishment, I'm always chasing that emotion. If I was a singer, I'd try and write a song that did it. But for better or worse, I find myself doing magic. And so I use that to try and chase after that emotion and to bring it out in an audience. Thankfully, it is very possible to grow old gracefully as a magician. I think, yeah, the key is to adapt, to stay flexible, to keep changing, always questioning what you do. Just like anything in life, really, you can, you can grow gracefully with it or, or not.